so I'm gonna have to do this review a little bit differently because this week has been really busy for me, but Lexus dropped off this 2022 NX350 F Sport model in my absolute favorite color combo, red and black. And so I'm trying to squeeze this in as quickly as possible. So bear with me, I'm gonna do this a little bit more off the cuff and quickly, but I hope it provides you value. So without further ado, this is the 2022 Lexus NX350 F Sport. So let's start with the styling because that is one of the biggest departures from the previous NX. The previous NX looked like a sad egg, like an egg that had lost its self-esteem. But this new NX adopts the sort of IS's more crisp, updated Lexus sort of design language, and I am here for it. I really like the way that this thing looks in red and black. Now, don't get me wrong, I am swayed by the F-Sport styling with its 20-inch black F-Sport wheels. Those look great. They're just big enough to kind of look substantial without being cartoony, but I do think in regular guys, the new NX definitely looks the part. It's a huge improvement. Guys, we're talking about glow up here. The NX NX might be the top contender for automotive glow up. I also like how even though Lexus is sticking with the large grille, the lighting elements are just getting a little bit more kind of, I don't know, tightened up a little bit, I guess. That's the best way of putting it. And I also am a sucker for the fact that Lexus is doing more sort of rear light bars. Are rear light bars cliche yet? Comment down below if you think rear light bars are cliche yet. I do not think they're cliche yet, and I'm fine with the rear light bar, and it looks good at night. But let me know if you think rear light bars are cliche. Have they jumped the shark? Do you even know what jump the shark means? Look that up, it's from a show called Happy Days. Also, I'm old. Under the hood, we have a big improvement as well. This is a new turbocharged four-cylinder, making 275 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque, all running through an eight-speed automatic transmission. I do wonder, though, if that eight-speed automatic is maybe holding it back a little bit. I felt like, you know, 300-plus pound-feet of torque should move this thing a little quicker. And don't get me wrong, the NX isn't slow by any stretch of the imagination, but I was surprised it wasn't a little quicker, closer to sort of the six second range in zero to 60. It's like 6.7 or something like that, which is fine, but you know, I thought it would have a little bit more oomph maybe. That power is routed through an all wheel drive system in this model. And because this is an F Sport with the adaptive variable suspension, you do get Lexus's drive modes. And let me talk about that for just a second. This thing drives light years better than the previous NX. And to be honest with you, in my opinion, it drives better than many of Lexus's current offerings. It wasn't that long ago that I had the Lexus RX and I was not a fan of the way that thing rode. Not because it was uncomfortable, because it was too comfortable. It was absurdly soft and it pitched and wallowed and bobbed and weaved like a big fat boxer that was trying to avoid getting punched like that uh, jelly bean or butter bean or whatever that big fat guy's name was. And I didn't think that it was very refined feeling for a luxury offering. This is night and day different. This is nice and firm and controlled without being harsh. This is how a Lexus should drive and ride. Also, when you dial it into Sport and Sport Plus with the adaptive variable suspension, which I just like to say, because that's how it's printed on the window sticker, you get meaningful differences in the way that it feels. And it, it starts to feel, dare I say, a little bit sporty. And, and I really like that. I think it's a massive improvement in the ride and handling balance. Also, I feel like the brake feel is improved. It could be a little more progressive, but it's definitely not grabby at the bottom end of the pedal travel. And the throttle calibration is fine to me. I don't think you'll notice it either way. It's perfectly acceptable. The steering is good. There's not a lot of feel, but it's accurate. It has a pleasant weight to it. So all in all, big improvement in the way that the NX drives. We 
haven't even gotten to what is perhaps the biggest improvement in this new NX, and that is the interior. The old NX felt old because it was old and it looked old. I was not a fan of it, and some people kind of blasted me in the comments of that video. You can check it out, I'll link it below. But honestly, the old NX was not acceptable by today's standards. This new NX night and day difference in the interior. It is much improved. First of all, this one has the optional 14-inch infotainment system, and it looks glorious. Thank the maker. It's running an updated kind of version of Lexus's new kind of infotainment. You get wireless Apple CarPlay. You get all the connectivity features that you could want. This one has the Mark Levinson stereo system. It looks good. It sounds good. It interacts well. You don't have hard buttons for the climate control, but they're ever present kind of touch buttons along the bottom row. I'm totally fine with that. I had no issues. You do get dials for the temperature, so that's fine. And you get a volume knob, but all in all, the infotainment is a massive upgrade for Lexus as a whole. Oh, and by the way, that awesome new screen comes with an awesome new surround view camera that has kind of a neat party trick. It can display what's underneath the car. So as you back up, it, I guess it sort of remembers what was in the road when the camera went over it, and it projects it underneath the car in sort of a clear outline. That's just cool, and it feels way more like a premium luxury type of feature that you'd see on a vehicle like this compared to the old NX where the surround view camera looked like a Game Boy. This one has the heated and cooled F-Sport seats, which remain some of my favorite seats. Lexus nails the F-Sport seats. I love them. These, these F-Sport seats have nice bolstering. They hold you in place, but they have great lumbar. They're extremely comfortable. Some of my absolute favorites, especially if you're a taller, weirder shaped individual like I am. I also like that it has a heated steering wheel. All of the ergonomics are pretty logically laid out. So it is a very easy cabin to get comfortable in. I also like this F-Sport steering wheel. Is this like the new design, Lexus? Is this your like new F-Sport steering wheel? Because I'm down with that. This one also has a panoramic sunroof and and it has the Hey Lexus virtual assistant, which who cares? Now, what you do care about is that this has Lexus Safety 3.0, and Lexus has one of the most comprehensive safety systems on the market. You get all of the collision alerts, all the blind spot alerts, of the aforementioned surround view camera. You get rear cross traffic, front cross traffic. You get a really great adaptive cruise control system. You literally get all of the things. I really like Lexus's safety systems, and this one is no different, if not better. It's just better in every way, and I'm fine with that. The old Toyota Lexus system was getting a little long in the tooth. This one is a great improvement, and as far as I can tell this week, it works perfectly well. Criticisms in the interior? Well, I did see some of the magazines kind of say the interior materials weren't nice enough. I would tend to disagree. I think they're fine. This car's as tested price, basically fully loaded with the gas-powered engine, not the hybrid, is $55,000. You can spend more if you get the hybrid, and there's a very excellent plug-in hybrid, and you know how I feel about the Toyota RAV4 Prime, so I think that plug-in hybrid might be the way to go. It pains me to say it, because I love this F-Sport model, but that plug-in hybrid, it has like 37 miles of EV range. That's fantastic anyway. I do think that at this price, I'm okay with the interior materials. The leather feels good, the plastics feel good. I will say that I think the gauge cluster is boring. It's sort of similar to Lexus's traditional system, and I don't really know why. It's just a digital version of it, which is fine. But when you have gauge clusters like in the Genesis GV70 with a kind of 3D look, I just think that this is kind of a missed opportunity. Also, it seems to have some kind of subscription service for the nav system. That is stupid. I will never use your subscription service for nav. I will only use Google Maps or Waze via CarPlay. Cut it out, automakers. No one cares about your dumb navigation system. We're not gonna use it anyway. Just stop offering them. For real, I'm being serious. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Let me know in the comments, but I think nav systems in cars are dumb. But other than that, it's great. 
Now, it's a little tight for my tallish family, but you know, you might not be packing your six foot one volleyball player in the back seat. You might have younger kids, or maybe your kids are grown and out of the house, and you just want a nice vehicle to drive around. I have plenty of space up front, but I'm not even going to show you me attempting to sit behind myself because it's not possible, and I'm not Doug DeMuro. I'm actually taller than Doug DeMuro. It is a little tight. Oh, and in case you're wondering, this is the cargo space, and it's 22.7 cubic feet. So it's not bad. There's plenty of space for my camera bag and tripod and gear. And we're going to take this down to Atlanta to the volleyball tournament that's taking up all my time this weekend. So that's why I'm filming this now and very desperate, quickly talking, blah, blah, blah. But it is totally fine. So 22.7 cubic feet in a vehicle of this size, I'm good with that. Okay, so we interrupt this regularly scheduled review with a little bit of an update because we actually just got back from Atlanta where we were at a volleyball tournament all weekend. I think I mentioned it in the video. And a couple things I would notice, um, it is pretty tight for a family of our size. However, as a nice sort of luxury vehicle to drive in the city, especially because where we were staying had one of the smallest parking decks I've ever seen in my life. Um, that actually paid dividends. We are all able to fit in it and we could pack bags enough to be gone for the weekend down in the city. And so ironically, even though it's a little tight for us, it was perfect for a vehicle that had to be parked in a very tiny hotel parking deck in the middle of Atlanta. Um, also, I did some sort of long highway trips with the adaptive cruise control, the next level of the adaptive cruise control from Lexus. Um, it's pretty good. It feels like an evolution of kind of the old system. Um, it's a little on the conservative side, meaning you can't really take your hands off the wheel for like very long at all. And also the minimum follow distance is still about two plus car lengths back, which means people are constantly trying to get in between you and the car in front of you. But other than that, it was perfectly sort of comfortable on the highway, did a good job maintaining its lane, didn't pogo in between the lane markings. So I was happy with that, but it was a good companion for a long weekend in the city. So if your family is on the sort of normal side of of things like in terms of height or you have younger children like I said this might be a very doable small SUV or if you have a giant you know suburban as an alternative so should you buy the Lexus NX 350 or just the Lexus NX in general? Well, yes and no. I think the NX makes a fantastic case for itself. It is hugely improved, vastly better looking, drives infinitely better than the old one, and is one of the best Lexus products currently available. So if you're a fan of the brand and you value long-term reliability and you want something that looks good, drives good, and just generally works, then yeah, you should probably check out the Lexus NX. But if you're asking me, at this car's as-tested price of $55,000, that puts it right in line with the incredibly stylish and very feature-laden Genesis GV70. And if you've watched my channel before, you know how I feel about the Genesis GV70. And if you haven't seen my channel, welcome, hi, nice to meet you. Go check out that review. It is absolutely one of my favorite vehicles on sale today. Now, the one that I tested before was a fully loaded sport model that was over $60,000, but you can get a darn good GV70 for $55,000. It is possible. And the base engine in the GV70 is a 300 horsepower turbo four. So because of its rear wheel drive dynamics, slightly larger interior volume, even more attractive interior style, I would say equal levels of technology, and also attractive exterior style. Given the choice, I'm probably gonna go with the Genesis GV70, but that's just me. And I strongly encourage you to check out both if you're interested. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for checking out this video. I know that it might've been a little bit all over the map and I was kind of doing it more like vlog style and maybe there's some footage in from earlier or later or at the volleyball tournament. I don't even know how I cut this thing together. I'm only guessing because it's the middle of the week and I had to get Get this done. So I appreciate you watching. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions about the Lexus NX, comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, ride safe, drive safe, and I will see you in the next video. All right, peace. Win.
wind, right on cue. Press play, gust of wind, never fails. Pretty sure I just spit a little bit on that one. Didn't get on the camera, did it? There's that barking dog again. It's gonna bark the whole way out of the park, every single time. How do you live with that dog? Can you guys hear that? If this is the bloopers and you made it this far, comment barking dog. 